everybody, this is Brian Killer, and today I'm going to show you real quickly how you can um, import some audio into the Kobolo Studio, uh, which will compress the audio down and allow you to be able to share it much, uh, much more easily uh, with others by taking your file size, uh, making it much more manageable, but keeping the file quality that you need to be able to uh, collaborate and work with others, um, especially with uh, many, many audio files or large audio files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a project that I've already got set up here. Uh, I don't have any audio imported into it, uh, but that's what we're going to go ahead and show you how to do. So uh, I'm using the most recent build of the Koblo Studio right now, which has just entered its beta phase. You can download it for free from Koblo.com. And I'm going to go ahead and import some audio. I'm going to go File, Import Audio. And I'm going to open up a directory, and I've got some MP3s right here. These are all some great hip-hop instrumentals uh, passed on to me by Joe Bro Media. You can check them out from the link right there on your screen uh, to see what they're doing over at Koblo.com. So I can click on one of these MP3s, and I can audition it real quick. So that sounds pretty good, and I could audition the rest of these if I wanted, but I'm going to go ahead and just add them into my import queue. <clears throat> so after I've done that, I'm going to just click Import, and the Kobo Studio is going to ask me if I want to keep these files as stereo files or split them up into mono tracks. I don't really need to split them into mono tracks, not for what I'm doing, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Yes, which will import them all as uh, stereo audio streams. It's going to ask me that question for each MP3 as I go along. And now I've got my audio uh, imported here into my, uh, my project, and what I'm going to do is I can drag these over into the edit view here and I can look at the waveforms. And I can expand those tracks to get a better look at them if I'd like. Now I can audition them here as well. And if I want to quickly move the playhead around, I can drag it and move it around. I can also click at the top near the minute second bar beat section and that'll move it around. I can also, if I want to move to a specific point on a waveform, I can move the mouse to that point. I can hit P and that'll move the playhead directly to wherever my mouse is. Which is a very quick and easy function to let you uh, switch around and do some editing. So now that I've done that, I've soloed my first track and I'm just going to hit play. So there's that one, and I'm going to go ahead and solo the next one down. And repeat again for the third track. So there you go. I've got all three of my tracks ready to go here. I could add some effects to these if I were so inclined. Uh, I could, you know, easily add a phaser something like that if I wanted to, but I'm not really going to add any effects or do much mixing right now because what I'd like to be able to do is take this project and send it over to Kobo.com to be able to uh, quickly share it with other users. I can also put it up for sale if I want to. So what I'm going to do is uh, click on File and I'm going to click on Export for Web. This will bring up the Export for the Web dialog and here I can select the amount of compression I want to use on these files. Uh, if I'm just going to be doing some quick uh, comparison, maybe with another person who I'm collaborating with or something like that, I don't need the absolute most, as it is put here, insaner quality uh, for the files. That's very useful, let's say, if I was making a, uh, a remix kit that I specifically wanted to make sure that users had the best audio quality but also a manageable file size. 
Uh, but in this case, maybe I just want to be able to share this with some friends or things like that. Or maybe uh, I really don't mind some medium uh, file compression. So either way, I'm going to click on medium. Uh, and what this is going to do now is just compress these files at the, uh, the medium compression ratio. Now what I can do, uh, which is an optional thing, but I can do it, is I can select a uh, license to go along with all of these files. And this is a Creative Commons license. And uh, if you don't know about Creative Commons, you can check them out at creativecommons.org. Uh, the short answer is that Creative Commons is a uh, now becoming very viable alternative to the classic copyright. Uh, it's a little bit easier, it's a little less restrictive, and it also gives artists and those that use an artist's work a few more options to be able to, uh, to use that work. So what I can do is I can read about these licenses uh, by just clicking on View License Online. And that'll open up my web browser, that'll give me some information on all these licenses, because obviously there are a lot of different options. I'm just going to stick with attribution, which is a very common license at this point right now. Uh, but again, you can change this to suit your needs. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click Export. When I click Export, it's going to ask me where to save the project. I'm going to go ahead and go to my desktop and open the directory where I have my MP3s. And I'm just going to save this uh, under... I'm going to add Export to the file name there. And I'm going to hit save. And what this is going to do is it's going to start compressing the files down into a smaller format and save this project for me to be able to export it to the web. Once the file is done processing, uh, what we can do is I can show you the difference between the overall file size of the previous Kobo project, Kobo Studio project, and the one that I can upload to the web. So I'm going to open up my Finder real quick. And I have my original project here, which is called jobo.ks project. I'm going to do an info on that real quick. You can see that's 267 megabytes right here. And that's not huge, but that's a little bit big. Uh, you know, that's maybe, what, a quarter or so of even a regular CDR. Here's my exported project. And I'm going to do an info on that real quick. You can see the exported project is... 30.5 megabytes. So that's a pretty big difference when you come down to the overall file size. And I can zip that up also, and that'll make it a little bit smaller. But uh, obviously, 200 something megabytes down to 30 is much more manageable. So the next thing that I'll do is I will make a zip file of this project, which I can do in OSX very quickly by just creating an archive of it. So after I've made my archive, I have my uh, exported project saved as a zip file. Let's go ahead and do an info on that again. We're down to 29.7 megabytes, which is pretty manageable when you come right down to it. So our next step will be to upload this to koblo.com.